This is my Balasson collection. And those guys too. So starting off my Balasong collection, we got my CCC knives. CCC standing for cheap ones, clones, and just plain crap. But uh, we're gonna go from oldest to newest, I guess, for the CCC collection. For my main collection, we're gonna go from cheapest to most expensive. This right here was my first ever Balasong. As you can see by the condition of it, I would not recommend this thing. <laughs> It did, however, get me into flipping. Not seriously. It just kind of got me to learn the first couple tricks. Um, I haven't even had this for a year yet, actually. It's kind of crazy. But uh, this thing was on Amazon for, I believe, $25. If you want to pick one up, I don't recommend it. But I also, like, if you maintain it properly, it could do well. I've just lost most of the hardware. But uh, it's not that bad. It just doesn't hold up. The second battle song that I got ever was this right here. This was my second ever battle song. The first one I personally bought. As you can tell, uh, probably wasn't very wise of me to get this battle song as my second pick for obvious reasons. <laughs> this thing is all right. By all right, I mean it's absolute trash. It is literally held together with tape. The hardware is horrible. It's on tang pins that don't work. Um, cost me a whopping forty dollars because it was like seventeen bucks shipping and tax. Do not buy this ever. Um, yeah, we're not going to talk about that one anymore. Next up, we got this. This was my second ever battle song that I bought. The third battle song I've ever owned. This thing is also very bad. It's really heavy. Um, I lost a bunch of the hardware. I think that's why it has three handles. <laughs> uh, it's, like I said, super heavy. It cost me $17 on Amazon. Um, I would not recommend this guy to anyone. But I've learned since then I don't buy these anymore. But uh, one funny thing about this. I call it my Alpha Beast Swordfish clone. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but those handles look very reminiscent of an Alpha Beast uh, by BRS. And the blade, somewhat like a swordfish, except it has little wings. But <laughs> uh, it's on tang pins too. Do not buy this either. Like, that's what the CCC collection is. It's all my failures. <laughs> Next up, we have my first 3D printed battle song that I designed. Um, I designed and printed this by myself and um, I did a really good job Tolerances on it are fabulous The balance oh man, it's unmatched um, Yeah, it has ball bearings press fit into the handles a Fishing weight that is adjustable if it falls out uh, it literally melted in the handles. It has look, what looks to be like eighth inch thick washers, which is very, very bad. But I flipped this thing only for probably a month and a half or something. That's what I learned stuff like the behind the eight ball 
even the choker fan on, if you can believe that. Next up, my first half decent Bala song. This is the Bally Plus um, Kraken. The Bally Plus 6061 Kraken, not 7075, which is probably my biggest regret about this thing. Um, after waiting a month for this thing to arrive, I got it, immediately picked it up, and was like, wow. Uh, it kind of changed my flipping, got me set on that trajectory of becoming an actually decent flipper because it was actually good. It wasn't cheap CCC stuff, it was just C clone. Uh, other than it being a clone, like I would recommend this. Uh, it's kind of slippery. I would recommend the 60, 70 75 one a lot more, but this one is all right for what it is. I'm gonna do a sound test for this one because it's actually not that bad. Except for that. <laughs> the sound isn't very good. The tolerances are also not very good. So I beat this thing to heaven. Like, look at that. Um, I don't know if you can see on those handles. Like, look at that. It is so beat. I, I literally threw it across the gravel yesterday like 50 feet just because I wanted to throw it. <laughs> but the Kraken clone served me well. Next up, we have the Bally Plus Nautilus clone. This thing is a piece of trash, okay? This one fills the clone and just plain crap category because this thing is absolutely horrible. I paid $50 for this compared to the 40, 35 actually that I paid for the Kraken clone. And this thing only lasted me a month before the handle got completely died. And uh, tolerances are terrible. Like, look at that. Handles are pretty much touching. The play on it is very bad. This did, however, convince me to purchase my very own legit Nautilus by Squid Industries. So that's something. But the Valley Plus Nautilus, I would never buy this again. If you are wanting a Nautilus clone, go ahead and pick up a Armed Shark Nautilus. Uh, got a friend of mine from Poland, Horizon. Uh, he watches these videos. He's a fellow Balasong YouTuber. Go check out his review of the Armed Shark Kraken. Sorry, Armed Shark Nautilus. Armed Shark Nautilus. It's a very good video, very entertaining. And uh, yeah, if you're looking into a Nautilus clone, go check that out. Finally, Okay, to end out my CCC collection, we have these, the Flytanium UFOs. I bought three of them because they were free. If they weren't free, I wouldn't have bought one in the first place, but only having to pay $3 shipping for something that's flippable was kind of cool. Um, these things are honestly pretty fun. They're not clones of anything, but they are very cheap and pieces of crap but I kind of like these for what they are. I'm happy I bought them for free. Uh, anybody who paid $18 for these, like why would you Why would you do that? They are not worth $18 at all. Um, here's a tolerance test. They got very plasticky tap. The play on these is uh, pretty bad uh, for being on bushings, believe it or not, but for the free price I paid for these, well worth it. Now, let's get into our next battle song, the Squid Industries, Squiddy B. For my legitimate collection, we are going to go from cheapest to most expensive, which I will go show you real quick. Starting off, we got the Squiddy B, and we're going all the way down this line, and then up to that guy. My absolute best battle song. Except there is one hiding in a bush over there. <laughs> that may be better. Um, yeah, we'll get to that. This is the Squid Industries Squiddy B. I love this thing. I recently filmed my review of it. Um, review's doing all right. Hopefully I help some of you guys out with it. If you are looking into a Squiddy B, I really, really like this Ballasong. I paid $55 for it at Blade Show West. 
2023. And it was well worth my $55. I got some complaints with it. It's a little bit slippery, especially when it's cold. It does not have jimping, which leads to choker fans being very difficult. Um, yeah, really hard to do a choker fan on this. But some features about this that are very good are the um, fact that it has metal weights. One press fit into the nose and two into the handles. It's on Zen pins, which is pretty nice. It's got uh, T10 hardware, which is good. It's on washers, metal washers actually, phosphorus bronze. And yeah, everything about this is worth the $55 you pay for it. Like it's got very nice squid hardware. Okay, it's got everything is good. It's made out of ABS plastic, I believe. Uh, it has plastic tap, but all ballast songs do, all plastic ones. Uh, it has some play, but that's to be expected. The sound of this is actually very good. I'm gonna do a sound test right here. Okay, that's not too great, but just wait till you hear this. Oh yeah. For some reason, I love that sound. I don't know if it annoys you guys, but that sound, Squiddy B, Ice Pick Sound Test, it's great. So for $55, I would recommend this to everybody. It's a very good flipper for the price. Oh, I almost landed that. And uh, I actually learned certain things like, let's see if I can do it. The Ariel to OG, the Ariel to OG Chaplin. The Ariel to OG Chaplin. That was good enough on the Squiddy B. Because it's so light. Um, it's very flowy. Like my giraffes, when I can do them really good and my fingers aren't frozen, they flow really well on the Squiddy B. But yeah, that is the Squiddy B. On to the next ballast song, which happens to be my newest ballast song the Glider Co. Bermuda. The Glider Co. Bermuda. This is a very good flipper for the price. I paid $40 for this. You know what? I probably should have done this before the Squiddy B. But you know what? Whatever. Brand new. These things cost $60, I think. But you cannot get them anymore. Uh, because they were a one drop thing. One drop wonder type deal. Um, I know a guy in my comments. One of my subscribers he paid $200 for a glider Bermuda on eBay he said and that is absolutely insane uh, like I guess that's what he wanted he really really wanted a Bermuda someone go buy it from him for like 250 or something help that guy out but the glider Bermuda is G10 it is a sandwich ballast song it has G10 spacers T8 hardware short little blade and uh, G10 scales on Probably 6061 aluminum, that would be my guess. It could be 7075, I do not know. Uh, it's on Zen pins, always a good thing. Has an absolutely insane handle bias, like, like there is the there is the balance point. Um, you can really, really feel it when flipping. It does certain things like rollovers pretty well. Chaplains are super sticky. Um, but one thing that I found to be very good on the Glider Bermuda, is handle swap aerials. For some reason, they feel super good to me. And I don't know if anyone else feels that when, like I know some of you got Bermudas. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about handle swap aerials for this or like what other tricks you feel go very good on the Bermuda. So let me do a sound test for this guy right now. It's got this really weird tap. It's not the blade tapping on the blade. I believe it is a ball bearing because this is on bearings and it's either a ball bearing or a loose screw, but I had that issue when I unboxed it and I'm still having it. Um, here are the tolerances on it. Just prepare yourself for this. Can you see that? Like they barely move. They're so tight. That's just like washer flex. There's no wiggle to it. It's just that. Um, I'm absolutely blown away by the tolerances on this. This is my first glider product, so I don't know if all glider products are like that. 
but very good. Now, on to the sound test. The Glider Bermuda sounds pretty good, I think at least. So yeah, um, Glider Bermuda, even though it's discontinued, if you can find one, I highly recommend picking it up for less than $200. Don't do that. Don't do what that guy did. <laughs> but yeah, pretty good. Now, on to the next ballast song in my collection. So I know a lot of you love this thing. You'll hear my thoughts on it. The Bionic OSI by Ballast Song Flipping. The Bionic OSI is a ballast song made by none other than fellow ballast song YouTuber, Ballast Song Flipping. Very creative name. Uh, he's a very big ballast song YouTuber. Not uh, body wise, but like YouTube channel wise. Uh, he's got like 250, 260,000 subscribers. Biggest ballast song YouTuber in the community, I think, except for maybe big flips. I'm not sure. Wow. But this is his battle song, his second one. First being the Polaris, Polaris, either. Uh, I don't have it, never flipped it. But from what I've heard, it is pretty darn good. This is made out of what I believe is 6061 aluminum. I could be wrong. Um, it's got G10 inlays, which I sharpied black. You can kind of see the green popping through maybe, but uh, yeah, it is all right. It's very blocky, that is one thing I, Notice now more than I did in my review is the blocky texture, not texture, blocky nature of the Bionic. But nevertheless, it is a fairly good flipper. I know a lot of people, uh, Qbert flips, uh, see who else? Tucker flips, loves this thing. A lot of people love this. And I see why they would, but being someone who prefers slimmer battle songs, I cannot say I love this thing. I think it is a good flipper, but I do not love it. Uh, it's got this really nice jimping. That is something kind of cool. For those of you who do ladders, I've been working on my ladders and I'm almost there. Um, let see. The G10 is pretty nice. You can definitely feel it. It's also got these little uh, cut-ins. Those are pretty nice. It's like jimping, but in the middle of the ballast hole. It's got T10 hardware, Zen pins, washers, bushings, all that good stuff. Time for the tolerance and sound test. The Bionic has never developed tap, uh, unlike the Volt, which I'll talk about in a second. Tolerances on it are pretty all right. You could always tighten the screws a little more. I haven't tuned it ever. Um, you could apply more oil too, but yeah. Now the sound test. Sounds really good. Very high pitch sound. And I really like that. So yeah, Bionic OSI, forgot to mention, I paid $60 for this. However, brand new, these cost $88. Unless you use the uh, coupon code that is probably expired by now. But there are many others like Jake10, Cube10. Uh, there's, there's a few others, but yeah, those support fellow flippers, but yeah. Next up, Will Hirsch X in the Ballast Volt. This video is gonna be really flipping long if I do not go fast for the Volt, which I was gonna do anyway because I do not like this thing. It's very slippery. I find myself dropping it all the time. The balance of it is not that bad with zippy inserts, which I have right here. By the way, zippy inserts are my most viewed video on this channel. Go check that out if you haven't already. It's pretty old. But the zippy inserts are great. Talking about those more than the Volp. <laughs> Sorry, Will. The Volp is slippery. It has really good jimping. That is also slippery because of the anno. It's got this uh, little cut-in that only goes down like a millimeter, something that's barely anything. Tolerance is on it. Oh, they're very bad. I will be picking up a Volt 
Pro when they release. If you don't know already, check some of the newer Will Hirsch flips videos. Will flips. They're like uh, maybe a month old. Go check those out. And in the background, you can see a Volt, which what appears to be Cygnus uh, G10 liners. But yeah, I pay attention, Will. Okay. So yeah, the Volt has Zen pin issues, just like you saw right there. Both my Zen pins almost popped out. It's got T10 hardware. Mine is completely stripped. Um, I don't like this thing at all. I'll give you a sound test, and then we're leaving. And I lost my Zippy insert. The Volt doesn't sound that bad, but it is that bad at everything else. Next up, battle song that many of you have been watching videos on, and I personally love, the Squiddy AL. The Squiddy Al, or just plain Al, Squiddy Al, anything, call them whatever you want. Uh, this thing is very good. I paid $85 for this at Blade Show. Forgot to mention, I paid $65, yeah, $65 for the Volp. Zippy inserts, however, cost like $10, but they are well worth it. They are a necessity to have. But anyway, back to the Al. I paid $85 for this, $92 actually, $92, because I got the time odd. I paid $85 for my friends. But Squiddy Owl, very, very good ballast song. Made out of 6061 aluminum. Completely pinsless, no pins at all. Um, it's on washers only, but you can still tune it very, very well. It has adjustable balance, like insanely adjustable. Like in the eyes. See those? You see those eye weights? You see them? Uh, very good. We got pivot weights, also very good. You can just pop those out, have a very I believe very blade bias ballast song. Take out the eye weights, fairly handle bias. Um, and I think you can even get a neutral with different combos. Uh, I've seen people do one eye weight. I actually did that and I felt the balance change. Do not do one pivot weight. That'll be really weird for momentum. But anyway, Squiddy Al has this really nice texturing along the face of the handles. Very nice texturing along the blade. It's got a smiley face, has the Squid Industries logo, and it's just really good. I found this like since Blade Show, um, right afterwards, I should say, for the first, what, three weeks? Something like that, two, three weeks. I flipped the Squiddy Owl more than any battle song, even more than my Grail, which I'll talk about later. And it's because it's that good. Uh, I found myself being really smooth with this ballast song. Um, choker fans especially, like really good, even though it has no jimping. It's just got this texturing, like different texture on the sides and bottom of the handles than on the face, something to note. It's got the same texture on the blade though as the handles. It has a very good bite indicator, same as the Volt. Uh, the Bionic does not have one, neither does the Bermuda, and neither does the Squiddy B. But anyway, just something to know. I have the Magenta Time Mod, looks really good. Um, and Time Mods are out now. So I got them before they were even released on the website. They were like Blade Show exclusive Time Mods. But now you can pick one up and they look really good. If you don't have a Squiddy Owl already, this would be one of my recommendations for your first battle song. This and the Squiddy B. Squiddy B is plastic, however. This is aluminum. Squiddy and the Squiddy uh, Al, Squiddy B I should say, and Squiddy Al are the same profile. The handles are literally identical, almost. A little more chamfering, that kind of thing. The blade is also essentially the same, except one accommodates pins, one no pins. But these are essentially cousins. Like, there's tons of Squiddies now. Uh, actually gonna try to name them. We got the OG Squiddy, we got the Squiddy B, there's a Squiddy U, Squiddy A, even a Squiddy G, which is like a cat or something. And then there's a Squiddy Owl. 
but these are both very good. Squiddy Al is better. Squiddy B is just very good as a standalone uh, plastic ballast song. If you want your first ballast song to be aluminum, get this. If you want it to be plastic, I'd recommend the Squiddy B all day. Two of my friends uh, watch my videos all the time. They're some of my biggest fans, some of my first subscribers. I bought them both a Squiddy Al at Blade Show and they love it. It's their first battle song, both of them. And they're getting good at flipping just from the owl. So yeah, <laughs> Squiddy Al, very good. Pick one up if you don't have one already and if you have any sort of money. Next up, we have a very well-known battle song that all of you love, the LDY Orion. The LDY Orion is by LDY Ballasol. Um, it is now discontinued as there is a new model that is less expensive and what I have heard uh, from what I've heard better. It is aluminum 6061 I believe because it is so inexpensive I could be completely wrong but I don't really pay attention to that. Um, it has a sandwich construction, really chunky Zen pins, washers and bushings insanely good tolerances which I'll show you right now hear that hear that guys I don't <laughs> look at that play better than the Bermuda slightly you know what I just realized I don't think I did a tolerance and sound test of boy the squiddy owl let's do it real quick The ice pick sound test, uh, okay. The ice pick sound test of the Squiddy Owl is not the best because it is pinsless, but oh, that one is so good. That is so good. But yeah, back to the Orion, which we're gonna talk about. I'm actually gonna cut the video right here because my dogs are absolute psychos. Yikes, uh, are your guys' dogs like that? Just freaking out at the delivery guy, uh, whatever. Uh, the LDY Orion, we're, we're done talking about the L for the video, but the Orion is really good. The tolerances, like I showed you, are superb. Uh, the sound is also pretty good. Ice pick sound test on this is really good. Uh, whereas the other one is not as good, but, uh, the Orion has spacers that I personally took out. Yeah, um, I'm going to talk about that a lot in my review. My review of the Orion will be coming in the next month, probably. Uh, I have a lot of other stuff, a lot of other videos to film first. But it's going to be like a three-blade comparison, because the Orion, mine personally, and everyone else who bought one at Blade Show West, got the comb blade, as well as the trainer blade, and this blade. That's three blades for the $110 they were charging at the show. Um, for the basic Orion that comes with this blade and a trainer blade, it is only 100, which is a pretty good deal. But now there's the Orion 1.5, which costs $75 for a trainer, $85 for live. There's not a comb blade for that yet. But the Orion flips very good. Um, I, I kind of take it for granted a little bit. This is one of my ballast songs that I flip the least. I should say for my actual good ballast songs like the Bionic and the Volt, I never flip, but all my other ones I flip fairly frequently. The Squiddy B as well, I've kind of flipped less now, but the Orion I flip not much, and I regret it. I should probably. <sighs> it's the same delivery driver. Uh, I should probably flip this thing more. It's really, really good especially with no spacers because it makes it more neutral, a little more uh, tip weight, which is very good for fans and choker fans. Uh, the Orion also has pretty good jimping. It has jimping on the spacers too, so that helps a lot. But yeah, Orion, very good. Mine is Cerakoted, by the way. That's what they were selling them like at the show. But yeah, on to the next ballast song, which all of you know and love if you watch Blade Bias. 
the Prisma V2, not the Pro, the V2. Okay, while I'm working in this lube that I just put on, I want to thank you guys for sticking with me throughout this video. We are now on to the better half of the video with the best ballast songs in my collection. Uh, essentially my top five ballast songs, I believe, yeah. My top five ballast songs are in here, not in that order, still going from cheapest to most expensive. But um, yeah, thank you for sticking with me through what's gonna be like a 33 minute video or something like that. But yeah, thank you. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe if you're new. If you love ballast songs, uh, I'm the channel. Like I, I post very consistently, lots of fun videos, all ballast song related, except I do have some yo-yo videos, which I will actually, I'll actually pull out the yo-yo and the beglery right after the Prisma V2. But yeah, this is the machine wise Prisma V2. I paid $150 for this. $20 for these two T15 pivot screws at Blade Show West, which I completely regret. However, they are pretty nice. So this is technically $170 right here. This is my beater. As you can see, it is beat uh, it's really bad. Almost as much as the Kraken clone, except I'm a little more careful with this one because I still want it to flip good. Um, something to note, I was having some tolerance issues with the Prisma V2. Had some tap believe it or not and these things do not get tap but um yeah there's just a bunch of like old oil and that kind of thing in it so i cleaned it out which <laughs> was really hard to take apart because my pivots are literally folded over the screws so i had to pry them apart but I cleaned it out uh and now everything is good like tolerances still very good not quite what the tolerances machine wise is known for but they're still really good yeah no tap uh when you oil this thing like i just did it sounds really good like here has a slight ring very good ice pick sound test but yeah let's just talk about this for a little bit uh this is the prisma v2 not the pro um there are differences the prisma v2 features 6061 aluminum the pro is 7075 I do plan on picking up a Speed Channel Prisma Pro, hopefully with a live blade, um, the Prisma Propus with an Opus blade. Yeah, I came up with that myself, but this thing, the V2 is good. The Pro, I honestly like a little bit less. The Speed Channel uh, Pro, however, is perfection. I got to flip it at Blade Show. I actually have a short of it coming soon, but the Prisma V2, I would recommend this to everybody except you can't buy it anymore i got one from the last drop of prisma v2s so now they're all the prisma pro which is not bad he might bring back the prisma v2 eventually not sure about that but prisma pro is pretty much the same just a little more handle bias but there is the balance of this thing it's a little bit handle bias because i do have pivots in the bottom of the handle these are actually tsunami pivots because that's all i had being careful with them but it's got very good jimping it's got a nice texture along the face of the handles it's on zen pins bushing tune uh stainless steel washers which is something that machine wise kind of coined i believe uh, i met machine wise at blade show He's a cool guy but yeah that is about all i got for the prisma v2 let me just flip it for a little bit Again, cold fingers, you know? Anybody, any of you who live in a cold climate, you you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Next up, we got this guy right here. But first, we got these things that are just chilling. I got my yo-yo and my beggary, which is in my pocket, but I'll pull that out once I'm done talking about the yo-yo. This is just an Amazon yo-yo by Magic Yo-Yo Company. 
It's all right. One of my best yo-yos, my first unresponsive yo-yo. I've had some responsive yo-yos in the past. Whoa! Um, this one is my first unresponsive, and I prefer unresponsive. I haven't been uh, yo-yoing very much because battle songs are my main hobby. Yo-yos were just a side thing. Funny thing, uh, my yo-yo video, the one that I posted, um, is my most viewed video on this entire channel, which is kind of stupid because it's a battle song channel, not a yo-yo channel. But whatever, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Uh, also, something kind of cool. If you know the the guy who likes yo-yos, uh, he's on TikTok and stuff, um, and YouTube. He is the guy known for coining Godspeed on the yo-yo. Angel two up himself. He actually commented on that video. Go find my most viewed short. Check it out. You'll see his comment in there. But yeah, yo-yos kind of cool. I am going to make a follow-up video for the yo-yo. Hopefully this week. I People have reminded me a few times. I'm going to do it, guys. I'm going to do it. Hopefully it doesn't do as well as my other yo-yo video. It's kind of weird to say, but come on, Battle Songs. You need to take over. It's not a yo-yo channel. But anyway, yo-yo is pretty cool. I like it. I'm not going to hang it back up in the tree. But yeah, my beglery. I made a beglery tutorial. If you want to know how to go make this beglery, it is a fairly recent video on this channel within the last two months, I believe, maybe three. But beglery is pretty fun. I have a friend I sold a set of beglery to, and he is a beglery wizard now. Like, he's crazy with beglery. His name's Liam, and uh, he's super good with beglery. But yeah, this beglery is pretty cool. I also got a bracelet and an Allen key. That's cool. Uh, beglery bracelet. Yeah, kind of fun. But. It's a very, like, non-threatening thing to flip. I've, like, flipped them in public all the time. <laughs> but, yeah, if you want to learn how to make your own beggary, go check out my tutorial. Uh, costs less than eight bucks to make this. Just that specific one. You can make them essentially for free out of household stuff. But this is more pro-grade because they're very well-weighted. But, yeah, beggary bracelet. I don't have a tutorial on because it's not that great. But anyway, there it is. Time to talk about this guy. Quite possibly the most popular battle song in existence. Squid Industries, Kraken. The Squid Industries, Kraken is known throughout the hobby as the perfect battle song. As I described it as, no. The Squid Industries Kraken is known throughout the hobby as the perfect battle song. No one dislikes the Kraken. Everyone loves it. Tons of different variations of it. Bowie Blade, which I got right here. Tonto Blade, which I have on my clone. Uh, Weehawk Blade, coming soon. Speed Channel Kraken, Special Edition Kraken, Damascus Kraken, Whirlpool Kraken, Speed Channel Kraken, all that good stuff. There's a bunch of aftermarket stuff too. Squiggle Scales, uh, see clone, like just clone handles you can put on there, clone blades, which why would you do that? Um, also, let me see, what's, yes, the Bandage Knives Stitch Bow Song has interchangeable handles. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, the Kraken, very customizable, very good. <laughs> um, known throughout the hobby as not only the perfect battle song, but also the gold standard because this is kind of what started, like this is what built the uh, aluminum battle song thing. The Squid Trainer kind of started it, but the Kraken just kept it going. And now we're here, but yeah, anyway. Uh, if you don't have a Kraken already, like you must not have been flipping for very long, because most battle song flippers do have a Kraken, because it is known far and wide as the battle song that everyone's got. Currently, the Volt is also one that almost everybody has, like because it was so inexpensive. It's made by Will Hirsch. Everyone loves him. But yeah, anyway, Kraken's very good. Let's do a tolerance and sound test, and we're moving on. Sounds really
really good. No tap. Little bit of play. But yeah. Kraken. Uh, I don't know what the balance is on it. Okay, it's it's right there. I don't really know how to tell balance that well. Just kind of up to my discretion. It's on Zen pins, bushings, all that good stuff. This is a V3, by the way. It's got nice jimping as well. And this nice little cutout and texturing on the handles. But yeah, next up, we have my top three flippers that I own, okay? Got these three battle songs right here are my three favorite battle songs to flip. And you know what? This list is actually pretty good. This would be my top five battle song. Five, four, three, two, one. But yeah, let's get into this next one, which I just got back from being retuned for the second time. <laughs> the Squid Industries Nautilus B2. The Squid Industries Nautilus V2, which is this guy right here, is a very, very good battle song. This is my third favorite flipper in my collection. Uh, it is one of my favorite looking battle songs. Look at that, it's so clean. You got the Stormtrooper, Oreo, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, Nautilus. Uh, I'm trying to be kind of careful with it now because the last two times uh, that I, I've had my Nautilus, I have had to send it back to Squid Industries to get re- Ah! Oh! <laughs> to get retuned because it keeps like developing tap. The Loctite keeps breaking. It's really bad. It's not a durable battle song at all, but it is one of my favorite flippers. It's super fun to flip, very lightweight, very slim handles, and it's good. I can't say whether or not I, it's a good recommendation for you to get. This was my first actually really nice battle song. I got this right after my last CCC that I bought that cost money. So like it went boom, 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 Nautilus clone, and then actual Nautilus. And it, it was really good for a long time until the tolerances became absolute trash. It got blade rub, it got tap, doesn't right now. It had really bad play. I put new scales on it, swapped out the hardware, tried everything I could to save it. I could not save it. So I sent it into Squid Industries, made a video once I got it back saying that my Nautilus is back, all good and healthy, and then it died again. And now it's reincarnated for a third time, and maybe it will stay that way. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll be good at tuning after that, but whatever. Anyway, it has the buffness flips engraved on the handles, super cool has a like insanely skinny blade bushing tune that is it's it's a nautilus <laughs> yeah uh g10 scales which are it's very comfortable g10 very smooth which i like i know some people don't like the feeling of the nautilus scales but i do it does not have an adjustable balance or any of that it has mediocre jimping um Hopefully the V3 is better if that ever comes out. If it's even in the works, I don't know. It's got Squid Industries engraved on the inside of the handle. Wonder if you can see that. But yeah, Let's see. I'll try to hit a clip. I can't hit a clip with it. My fingers are too cold. But the Squid Industries Nautilus is one of my favorite flippers ever. Like even after everything I flipped at Blade Show, the Nautilus, freshly tuned, very good, is one of my favorite flippers. But yeah, on to my second favorite battle song. My newest grail, Titanium G10 Inlays, the LDY Cygnus. The LDY Cygnus is my second newest ballot song. Uh, I got it from my friend, the ballot song bearer, along with the Glider Co. Bermuda. Both in the same package. Just unboxed both of them on my channel. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this. It's it's good. Like, very, very good. I am a huge fan of the LDY Cygnus. I flipped one at Blade Show. 
didn't really see anything special about it. I was like, man, it's just a, another titanium battle song. But now that I own one, I absolutely love it. I watched a lot of James Hill videos and he loves the Cygnus. And I was like, okay, okay. I'll try one at Blade Show East next year. We'll see if I pick one up. And then Balasong Bear was selling his. I bought it from him, obviously. And now we're here. I anodized it myself. We got a nice, beautiful purple color. Uh, I'll throw up a picture of the really nice purple because you can't really see it in this lighting. But yeah, it has a slight handle bias i believe maybe it's a little bit neutral i don't know i have the channel spacers which are i believe lighter than the titanium ones because they're plastic or something really weird material has this g10 intertwined into the titanium which is really cool design very creative um sounds pretty good i was having some issues with the sound of it but then i just disassembled it cleaned it teflon taped some of this the zen pins because you can't torque down on the zen pins or else it screws up the swing tolerances are pretty good there's the play a little bit of wiggle not too bad no tap when it's freshly oiled there's not even a tap wiggle which is always a good sign but yeah this is my first anodization job actually so i'm actually pretty proud of the purple color that came out of my stupid little 9 volt battery metal straw setup. Okay. Um, I do actually know the blade material on this guy, unlike my other ones. This is S35VN because it literally says it right there. Oh, can you see that? I don't know. It says S35VN. So that's cool. It's got grade 5 titanium, something like that. Titanium screws as well, which are anodized blue. Yeah, very good. This is a beautiful knife, beautiful flipper. But now it is time to move on to my best flipper. But don't forget, there's still a battle song in that bush over there. That one. Okay, right here, right now. Squid Industries Tsunami. Production nine, number 384. Squid Industries Tsunami is a titanium battle song made by Squid Industries. It is their grail battle song, their first grail. Now they have three, the Madco and the Hydro, which is coming soon. Madco is really good, actually. I'm going to pick one up eventually. But the Squid Industries Tsunami is a absolutely beautiful knife, probably the most beautiful knife I've ever seen. Uh, my favorite battle song in my collection for obvious, feet, uh, obvious reasons. It flips amazingly, it has an adjustable balance in the handles, which is not a thing for me. They forgot to send me Zen pins. Any Squid Industries guy, if you see this, I would love some uh, pins for the weight system. They're not Zen pins, by the way, like I just said they were, sorry. But I have a blue, purple, blurple anodization. I call this thing my blue Nami, as you, I've told you before, but this is the best flipper I own. I have zippy handle inlays that are not in it right now because I honestly prefer the balance without them. I know, uh, I don't like the sound as much though. I have these zippy jimping mods, which I do keep in at all times because they're good. They do glow in the dark. Um, maybe I'll throw up a picture if I remember or if I want to. <laughs> it's got T10 hardware, very good titanium hardware. Grade five titanium chain witch handles zen pins that are hidden you can't see them on the face uh bushing and washers perfect tolerance is like hear that wiggle it's not there see that play it's not there like that's a tsunami for you one of the best sounding battle songs top three for me oh yeah Tsunami is perfect. I'm just gonna say it. This is 
truly the perfect battle song. Okay, this Kraken, it's the perfect mid-range battle song. It's got no flaws. Tsunami, mine at least, has no flaws. I know some people have had inconsistencies with their tsunamis. Squid fixes that for free. So if you have a bad tsunami, they'll fix it for you. Squid Industries, very good customer service, very nice people. But the Squid Industries tsunami is amazing. If you don't have a tsunami, I'm not gonna say go pick one up because they're $800. Forgot to mention uh, LDY Cygnus and the Nautilus price was, uh, and the Kraken. Kraken, I paid 234 because I got a blemished one. Nautilus, I paid 234 because I got a blemished, but I have different scales for it too. And the um, Cygnus 450 new, I paid 350 because it was from the Battle Song Bear. Actually, not 350, 361 if you want to be precise. But yeah, Tsunami, absolute perfection. Um, just wait, I am going to do a flipping edit thing where I go through all my Battle Songs. So you'll see a nice flipping clip of me and all my Battle Songs flipping. But anyway, time for the last Battle Song in my collection, the one hiding in the bush. It's currently unflippable, but I'll still show it to you. This is the Buffness Flips Ballot Chunk. The Ballot Chunk. It is 3D printed. It is a gigantic ballot song. It's went viral for me at least on, on, on YouTube 40,000 views over 30 videos not viral but still cool um, I did a 30 day series with this I'll probably do a compilation in the next year <laughs> Com combining all of them into one big video if you haven't already go uh, though just go look up 30 days of ballot chunk after this video they're pretty entertaining videos I'm doing like I was doing 30 different tricks on the ballot chunk over 30 days so a whole month but yeah if you are wondering why the thing is unflippable, one, one of my handles is missing. This is like a screwed up one from the printer. So just get that out of here. Two, I'm missing a bolt. That's why I'm missing a handle. The bolt actually fell out of my pocket into the Blade Show West toilet at the hotel I was staying. So yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> but this thing, you can actually tune the tap out of it, but then it's unflippable. I guess that's the same for all battle songs. It does have a ton of play i'm working on a new iteration of this that will hopefully be production ready <laughs> for my subscribers whatever um comment below if you'd buy a ballot chunk thank you um ballot chunk is a very good flipper i had this thing flipped by many <laughs> famous people in the community uh, zippy ballot song flip this i told him i would like give him the patent if you made like a good ballot chunk um Lucas, the CEO of Squid Industries, flipped it. Super cool. Lots of other people. Just lots of Instagram flippers, that kind of thing, flipped it. But yeah, the Bala Chunk, I love it. I'll get it back up and running soon. Hopefully, I'll print more and get that going. But yeah, this is my entire Bala Song collection. I love it. You guys love it. You've been waiting for this video for like two months. I'm sorry about that. I've been busy with many other things. Many things needed to happen before this video went live. <laughs> Many battle songs needed to be purchased. But yeah, thank you for sticking with me. Here is that super insane flipping clip edit thing. There you go.